All right, today on Free Field Training, we're going to talk about uh, leadership. And the problem that I have is that there's a very specific type of leadership that I don't see from people, and it's normally people that are complaining a lot about the leadership of their agency. When a big incident comes out, right, something big, somebody's shot, there's an armed robbery, something like that comes out, everybody wants to be a jackrabbit to fly all over the place and try to catch the people that did it right off of the little bit of information that we get from the caller right and nobody wants to go to the scene nobody wants to be the one that goes to the scene collects the information and then gives people out better new information that they can go get the actual people that did it with right so we'll get a shooting and the first thing that will come out is oh they got in a, a small gray car maybe it's a Chevy and they went northbound right and then we all know if we've ever had any type of those incidents is that the first guy that gets there finds out oh well it was actually somebody else said that it was a silver ford and it was a two-door and it was a convertible and they actually went southbound and the caller originally didn't know their directions right that's the basis form of leadership that we have is the people that will actually go to the scene take control of the incident and get information out and direct other people to do the things that need to be done to solve the problem. Uh, likewise, we have a big problem with people coming and doing scene security. You'll have one guy that'll show up on the scene of a shooting and they'll start collecting info and getting that info out and then everyone else will run around like lunatics trying to find the people that did the crime but then there's no one providing scene security for that person that's working that scene that's trying to figure out how they're going to protect the evidence on the ground until they can get evidence technician out there and that's trying to collect information from the people that were there. Someone was just shot or someone was just robbed on that scene. Somebody needs to go there with them and be their backup. If you can't be the person that shows up on scene and collects info and gives that info to everyone else, then how can you complain about the leadership of your agency or the leadership of your shift? You don't have to be a sergeant or a corporal or a lieutenant or a captain or a deputy chief to be a leader at your department. What you need to do is be the one who actually shows up and does the leadership work that has to be done when the situation arises. And the biggest and best way that we can do that is right up front, when a call comes out, especially if it's a call on our beat or your district or your whatever, your agency calls the little area you're responsible for, you show up and you get the information, you get it out to the other guys that are showing up so that they can go to try to find the person. All right. And that's what I came on to talk about today. Only got like seven people watching because I know it's the middle of the day, but this is the time that I have because I'm on afternoons. Uh, while I'm here, I don't know how long that took, like less than three minutes. While I'm here, uh, people have asked about medical kits before and I found this one online. Well, it's from Lynx Defense, right? Uh, I've been looking for tourniquet kits, like ankle tourniquet holder that'll also carry uh, other medical equipment. Like specifically, I want to be able to carry a pressure dressing, but all of the just tourniquet kits that I could find were like 50, 60 bucks, right? So I found this one, Lynx Defense, it was $20. And it's just a big ankle cuff, and you wrap it around. I've been wearing it for my last couple days off. I'm going to be wearing it at work today. So we'll see how it works out. That's pretty cool. That's something that's coming up. And uh, the one thing I noticed about it right away, I was like, for 20 bucks, I was just hoping it would be a piece of elastic with some sort of tie-down to, to keep a tourniquet in and a pressure dressing in. But I found out this thing actually, it has a pop-up feature. So when you pull it, it actually pops the tourniquet up into your hand. It does the same thing with the pressure dressing pouch. And then it's got two little elastic pouches on it right there, which is pretty cool. Just something to talk about. I'll be looking at that more in the next couple of weeks. I want to do a review. If there's not a lot to review about it other than it's only 20 bucks and it seems to work all right, we'll see how it works long term. All right, let's go back to the top of the comments. There shouldn't be too many comments and I don't have a lot of time to answer questions today. I can't be on here for two and a half hours, but it's the middle of the day. There shouldn't be a lot of people. So first, hey, how's it going? Who's this? <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to shave again today because I go to work. Hey, first time seeing live, missed the beard. Ah, I missed the beard too. What are you gonna do? You know, adult rules. You have an adult job, you gotta you gotta go by adult rules. VRP says you look different without the beard. I know. My daughter's really pissed. <laughs> Holy baby face, bad man. Hey, you know what? I guess if it takes years off, you know, that's not necessarily a terrible bad thing. Uh, Raven Squad Airsaw says, thank you for serving the community. I do what I love. You don't have to thank me. I do what I love. If I didn't love it, I'd go back to truck driving. 
Jaden Lamb says, hey, free field training. I'm going on a police ride along for my birthday, but not really sure. A lot of places will do ride-alongs for you if you live in the town that you're doing the ride-along for. So go to your local agency and ask them if you do a ride-along. They're probably not going to work it out for you on your birthday unless it just happens to work out. That's a good day for them. But if you ask to do a ride-along, give them your availability. A lot of places will let you do them. Is this on the market now? Oh, this thing? Yeah, I don't know how long this has been out because I had never heard of them before. I was just Googling. Link's Defense. 20 bucks. Or nineteen ninety nine or whatever twenty. It ends up working out to like twenty five bucks plus shipping or something. I forget exactly what it was, but yeah, it's out there. I'll put a link when we're done. I'll put a link down below. It's just the website. I mean, it's the only thing. If you if you Google Links Defense, I think it's the only thing that comes up. Oh, there it is. There's the there's the website. Linksdefense.com. Made in USA. If that matters to you, you know. But for twenty bucks, I honestly I would have been just happy if it was just a piece of elastic. Well said. Hopefully that was about the original topic. Uh, saw the title for the video. Open immediately. A lot of this going on in my neck of the woods. Appreciate the information. Thank you, Kane. Get a cat tourniquet. Soft tees suck. See, I, I like the soft tees because you're less likely to break them. Uh, and I prefer the metal windlass if weight isn't an issue. Right? This is what I get issued is the soft tee. This one this is what we issue here. I've got about four of these in various places. And I also have a cat, and I've been carrying a cat on my vest cover. So on my body armor, I have a cat. I actually started mounting it up on top to get it off my belt. I used to have one of these on my belt. This is what we were issued where I'm at. So it's what you're issued. It's what everybody knows how to use. Our ambulance carries cats, and all the cops carry soft tees. So... Better, it's better to give somebody something they know how to use and have them use it effectively than carry some other product because it's a little lighter in my book. Hold on. For what it's worth. I have both of them. But I, I switched to a cat because it's a little lighter and the paramedics know how to use it. And chances are somebody's going to apply a tourniquet to me. There's a good chance it's going to be a, a paramedic because we've got lots of paramedics hanging around. Luckily, I'm in an area where we have robust EMS services. The Lynx Defense Ankle Tico Holder on the market now. Yes, it is. It is on the market now. Do you ever watch Think Like a Cops channel? Pretty funny stuff and lots of crazy cop stories. Is that the guy he's retired and he like does videos in his barn? It's like this, but it's in his barn. I think I've seen those. I think I've seen some of those. He says a lot of stuff I couldn't say. <laughs> it's a good thing about being retired. How long have you been in policing? Zachary Twist, how long have you been in policing? I have been a cop for 11 years. No thanks asks, how do you feel about people taking pictures while you're working a traffic stop or a crime scene. As long as they're not interfering in what I'm doing, I don't care. I, like, for the past five years, everything I've done is recorded, right? Like, there's a camera on the dashboard of the car, so when I'm on a traffic stop, people are like, I'm recording what you're doing! All right, so am I. I don't, I don't care. Like, that's that's my life. That's been my life for six, seven years now since we st managed to put cameras in almost all the cars. So I don't care. I just, I assume people are recording, and then it's just easier. I'm not doing anything wrong. I don't care. Does your department have Thames medics? Uh, my department individually doesn't. We don't have a Thames program. Uh, we are part of a regional SWAT team called CERT, and CERT has Thames guys who are full-time paramedics and firemen in suburban agencies down here that are cross-trained for Thames with the SWAT team. Some of them have actually gone to SWAT school, which is nice that they understand both sides of it. And they can kind of provide their own security. Of course, if the laws were a little better here, they'd be able to provide their security a little better. But... The department doesn't have, like, we don't send guys to temp school, which is unfortunate, but I work with guys who were paramedics before they were cops, a couple of them, and it's nice having them out on the street, and everybody has to go to self-aid buddy aid classes, so everybody knows, and that's why these are the two things that I want to carry, is pressure dressing and the tourniquet, because these are the two things that I know everyone that's going to come to my aid knows how to use, and while most of them are going to have a tourniquet, because we're moving toward mandatory carry where I'm at, uh, a lot of guys, the pressure dressings in the trunk of their car, but that's that's why these two items. Noah Dishmore says, "Any funny ride-along stories about riders?" Oh, I can actually talk about that. Uh, I had a ride-along one time, and for some reason, one of the bums like really liked her. So every time we'd drive up near that bum, I'd roll the window down and wave hi, and it freaked her out. 
No harm done, I guess. She didn't like it very much. He's he's a goofball. And he'd be like, ah! That's my best story from Ride Alongs. Geert says, oh dear unholy sweet Jesus, where did the beard go? I miss it. Yeah, I got a video on it, actually. I videotaped doing it. Try to make it, like, inspirational, but what are you going to do? Uh, Randall Lee says, and everyone running around trying to be the hero ruins the probability of canine trafficking the suspects. So same. That's very true. Most of the time, it's with the, it's with, it's in cars, right? Because everybody likes to not get out of the car. So, they'll say, like, they took off in such X car, and people will be driving all over the place. But yeah, if you got last seen on foot, and they ran, like, they hopped a fence or something, everybody running around all different directions, and then, yeah, the dog's not going to be able to track. They're going to be like, who am I tracking? There's 30 cents here, and they all smell like sweaty dudes. Matthew Steele says, to keep a job, you got to do what you got to do, and I 100% respect you. No one said adulting was going to be easy. Adulting is not easy. Adulting is the hardest thing to do. Uh, uh, Raven Squad Airsoft says, and again, thank you for your service to the community. I aspire to become a Leo after my stint in the Marines. I want to be a Leo in the Marines. I've heard if you're an officer in the military, you do military police, it's actually not a bad career career path. I don't know personally. I wasn't in the service. But uh, people who were in the service tell me that they, they had it to do all over again. Guys that were enlisted and then came out to do uh, policing with civilian law enforcement said if they had to do it all over again, they'd stay in the military and be an officer, and then they'd be already be retired. You know, They would have been eligible to retire a lot earlier and have a second career. So it's something to look into. Uh, Godfather1313 says, I was a combat medic and never had a cat break ever. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you for the information. I just go by what people tell me. Uh, I've only ever seen a tourniquet used once in real life, and it wasn't a real tourniquet. It was something that we had to fabricate on the scene. Guy took his necktie, tied around him, and used a, a magazine from a Glock 22 to tighten down and make basically make a tourniquet on the scene. So I don't know. I hear from people that the cat tourniquets can break with the plastic windlass, and sometimes it takes more than one of them to work, and the metal windlass, you crank down that sucker all day, and it's not going to break. Um, I think maybe some of that with the cat tourniquet might come from the counterfeit cat tourniquets that are out there. I don't know. I don't know enough about the issue. I am not not a paramedic. I was not a combat medic. I just go by what I'm told. I am contrary to popular belief. I am not an expert in anything, in everything, and nobody is. Uh, Noah Dishmore says, "How do you stay away from politics at your PD?" You know, it's a political job, right? Like anywhere you're at, you you hold political office if you're a cop, so you can't get away from it. You just have to manage it, just like managing your boss. Got a video about that. Uh, quick question from Carmu. I'm gonna do. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Quick question. What would you do in a situation where you were the first officer on an active crime scene pulling up in your car? Well, you have to protect life. Here's the order. Life, property, legal. Right? So, if you show up and someone's in imminent danger of getting hurt or killed, you got to stop it. If uh, something's getting destroyed, you got to stop it. And then you got to worry about the, the legal ramifications of, like, the scene, right? Collecting evidence, stuff like that. It doesn't help to collect evidence if there's people dying or somebody's house is getting demolished. Then you go to legal. That's it. That's all you got to remember. From there, necessity dictates what you're going to do. It happens to me constantly. <laughs> constantly. Uh, Marquise 1911 says, the ambulance here switched to soft tees. Uh, Black Dolphin Knight says, can you recall an example where you had to use your interpersonal skills? Yeah, I'm I'm doing a live stream on YouTube right now using interpersonal skills to try to talk with people back and forth. But no, it's, it's all day, everyday work. That's 99% of what police does. That's 99% of what we do. Just go out and talk to people. That's that's the whole job. Without it, you're, you're doing nothing. You're driving around with a gun. No one's paying you to drive around with a gun, paying you to solve problems. Uh, Mark Perkins, 915. I'm thinking about putting in an application to my local sheriff's department. Everyone is concerned about this war on cops that's going on. There isn't. That's not. No. Don't don't let don't let the media convince you that 
crazy stuff is happening, you look at the, the numbers, right? Look at the numbers, and you were way more it's way more dangerous to be a cop in the 60s and 70s. That's the numbers don't lie. I mean, maybe there is there is a segment of society that hates cops and wants to kill them. But you compare that to the overall number of people in the country, and you're talking about, you know, you're talking about like sovereign citizen numbers worth like 0.0004% of the population. I mean, it's not even statistically significant. Uh, it's not something really to worry about. I mean, yeah, there's, there, the political climate is different today than it was 15 years ago. But the political climate of every time period in U.S. history is different from that time period than it was 15 years before. And it's going to be different 15 years from now. You don't know where it's going to go. I wouldn't hold up my dreams because of that. Garrett Rizzi says, yeah, that's the guy. Okay. Jesse Suarez says, how do you get graded during the physical test? Is there certain requirements? Yeah, Illinois has the POWER test. P-O-W-E-R. Like you spell power. I forget what it stands for, but you can Google it. And the requirements are on there. It's like a mile and a half run and sit-ups and bench press. And, and re sit and reach. Like everyone should be able to pass it. It's not, it's not a real big thing. Lewis Bothwick says, what rank are you? I am an officer. I work the street. I wear a blue uniform. I don't have stripes on my shoulder. And I teach other people how to be the police. I am what's called a FTO, a field training officer. It is nothing really special. VRP says, need advice. I live in the third world country, Serbia. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a third world country. We get a pair of handcuffs, a gun, and a baton. That's it. And usually I have problems with the drunk drugged or big guys who don't react to much don't react to the baton any advice for some chief less, less cheap less lethal methods I don't know what the legal stuff is in Serbia uh, the cheapest less, less lethal and the easiest to learn how to use is OC spray I don't prefer OC spray we've said this before it's not my favorite thing in the world but it, it can be effective if you use it preemptively right so dude says I'm gonna kick you you know, I'm gonna kick your ass or whatever, and you spray them with it up front, right? And that's only if the law allows you to do that where you're at. But that can be a, a cheap, less lethal method. If a baton isn't working, chances are there's not a lot outside of a taser that's gonna work. And even then, taser isn't 100% effective on trunks either. What you need is more help. There's, there's nothing like polyester pig pile as a less lethal. Matthew Steele says, some towns in New York actually have paramedic level trained police that roll around in police medic fly cars, which I always thought was an awesome idea. If you have the manpower for that, yeah, but most places don't. Zachary Twist says, I've been watching your channel a while and have gotten into my local police force in the UK as a voluntary police officer. I'm hoping to work towards getting paid for it one day, thanks. I'm glad you're inspired. Good luck. Should I switch to a nylon rig? I don't care. Switch to whatever you want. Nylon, like duty belt? The only good thing about nylon duty belts is they're easier to like sanitize, but they're a little harder to clean on a regular basis. Like leather and the the like the plastic, like I use the plastic nylon, you can just kind of wipe off. <coughs> I think actually I think the fake leather is the best of both worlds because you can sanitize it and bleach, and you also wipe it off easy. The the like ballistic nylon uh, duty belts are really hard to clean. They always I think I think they always look like crap. Uh, Walker Bradford says opinion on auxiliary police, special police i.e. the San Francisco PD's auxiliary police, NYPD's auxiliary police. They're different everywhere. I can't give an opinion on them. Where I'm at, our auxiliaries are very limited in what they can do um, because our requirements say that they have to be trained the same as full-timers. So, as long as the part-timers are doing things that are helpful, then they're helpful. Sometimes they're not. But most places around here keep them very strictly controlled, and so they're not a problem. And they're just an augmentation for, like, crowd control and stuff. Uh, Humberto says, what should I do to prep for the police academy? Anything you want. You might want to start running. A lot of police academies like to make people run. Do calisthenics. Get good at sit-ups, push-ups, jumping jacks, running. And then, at least then, the, like, the, the mental aspects of it are all you'll have to work on. So the physical aspects. If you're winded all day, it's harder to be, to be good at the, you know, the academics portion. Uh, Nathan says, Holy Bananas, I finally made one of your streams. Greetings from South Africa. Greetings from Chicago. Uh, Dove says, Been in private security for 14 years, managing the biggest retail account in Florida. Question, is it too late to start a career in law enforcement at the age of 40? And if so, what would be the highs and lows? Uh, I think you, where I'm at, you have to be under 35 at the time you take the test. 
But that doesn't mean that you couldn't still get into an auxiliary or a reserve type gig. Because I know people can get taken later in their life in that. Is it too late to start a career? Possibly. Is it too late to get involved? No, definitely not. Black Dolphin 90 says, what is your motivation to become a police officer? I like it. <laughs> I don't have a better answer than that. Like, I like it. It's exciting. I like the excitement. Uh, Mr. Fusion says, how many coffee cups do you have? I have two of these. I'm probably going to have a third one pretty soon because my wife's going to get pissed off about how messed up this one is and probably 20 at home, different types of coffee cups. K9 Bandit 12 says, I have good knowledge of all aspects of the work I do and become a leader most of the time because of that, but lacking confidence. Any suggestions on getting confidence in myself? If you have good knowledge of all aspects of work, then what's the problem with your confidence? Like confidence comes from knowing what you're doing. Franzu says, easy to get a carry permit and gun in your state? Relatively. People make a big deal about Illinois and the concealed carry permit process. Realistically, you need less training in Illinois to get a concealed carry license than to be an armed security guard. It's like 16 hours. I've helped teach the classes before they're not. They're not anything exciting. It's not really that difficult. What Illinois does is they make you get a FOID card, which is just a card that says you're not a felon and you don't beat your wife. It's just a background check. It's basically the same background check that they use to allow you to buy a gun when you do the, the instant criminal background check. So it's just like a six-week waiting period and $20 tax to be able to buy guns and ammo. It's not that big a deal. It's, it's an inconvenience more than anything else. Black Dolphin says, Can you describe a time you have had to make a decision judgment relative to your job? Every day, constantly. That's everything that... Everything we do is having to use your decision or judgment relative to your job. Well, how much to slow down coming into an intersection when you're going to lights and sirens is a judgment about how to do your job. Like, whether or not to turn the lights on in the first place is a judgment about how to do your job. Like, that's everything. Tasty Jones says, if you're under 21, then it could be a hassle because you need a parent to sign for you, which is weird about Illinois. I'll give you that. The FOID, if you're between nine, like 18 and 21, is weird because you need your parent to sign for you, which I never understood. Louis Blotwick says, do you think the UK police should get guns? They already have guns. They just don't issue them to everyone. If the UK police wanted to have guns, I'm sure they would all say they wanted to have guns. But every everything I've ever heard from them, they are always talking about how they don't want it. They don't want to be routinely armed. So I would leave it to the, the people that do it there to know whether they, they think they need them or not. And they say they don't. And the people that do need them become an armed officer. Jeremiah's Mustang. Have you ever had to pit someone's car? I don't talk about use of force incidents, but we don't train on pit maneuver here. Uh, Kuzu Reed says, do you know how my buddy can stay fit? He broke his leg recently. He's been looking to go into the training academy. How can he train his upper body? Weights. They also have machines that you can do cardio with just your upper body. They're harder to find, but they're out there. You look so different with your facial hair trim. Thank you. No age limit here. I don't know where that's at, but apparently there's somewhere where there's no age limit. Asher says, greetings from Canada. Greetings from Illinois. Roland says, I work in South Texas security at a utility plant at night, literally on the border with Mexico, but I've seen guys in black videos with AKs ac across the fence. You think I should have more than one SA sidearm? If they have AKs, what good is another sidearm going to do? VRP, and about the video, our department has an unwritten policy that if you can ignore the cr ignore crime, backup request, pursuit, you do it. Ignore crime, unwritten policy that if you can ignore a crime, comma, backup request, comma, pursuit, you do it. Okay. Uh, Asher says, what would happen in a case of a cross-state police chase? Would your department cross into Indiana and continue pursuing until the end? Would they back off the pursuit once other officers join? That actually happens to me a lot, <laughs> to be honest with you. And that it, it 
the crossing the state line doesn't matter. If you're in fresh pursuit of someone for a forcible felony, they're not just going to let it go because it's crossed the state line. That's that's dumb movie stuff. That's not how it works in real life. <laughs> and we're happy to have help from other agencies, but we're not going to give up the pursuit. If it's good enough to pursue it for anyway, we're not going to give up the pursuit because it crossed the state line. Uh, Mr. Fusion says, what do you think about Chicago's strict gun laws? They don't have them. The state pretty much took most of them away. So it doesn't, Chicago's gun laws don't matter anymore. You have a concealed carry permit in Illinois. The Illinois preempts Chicago's gun laws. So for all intents and purposes, nobody cares about Chicago's gun laws. Except people on the internet for some reason. <laughs> they have, they do have pretty strict gun laws on rifles. But again, you're talking about a, a pretty confined urban area where no one's using rifles anyway. I mean, like, people, people aren't running around with AR-15s in the city of Chicago. Most people care about handguns here, and you can get a handgun here. You get a carry permit, and it doesn't matter what Chicago's gun laws are. Especially if you don't live in Chicago, nobody cares. Hole 39 says, when you start working with a brand new officer, do you quickly form an opinion whether they will be good cops or wash out in less than a year? If so, what indicates success or failure? No, and it, back, I used to think that way, and here's the thing, you, you can never tell. You can never tell. Guys, until they get it, you know, I mean, there's people that never get it, that never understand what's going on, like what they're there for. And those people are probably going to be bad cops or they're going to wash out. But you can't tell from the first day, first couple of weeks, whether they're going to do it or not. It's Sometimes you can tell they are because they get it right off the bat, but not not like years down the road, they're going to be bad at it. You, you can't tell. I've had people, uh, excuse me, I've had people surprise me. Lewis says, what type of car do you drive? Well, right now I'm driving a Dodge Grand Caravan and at work I drive a Ford Explorer. Not the Echo Boost. I wish it was the Echo Boost. Uh, OC Outdoor says, do you watch Live PD? No. Mr. Fusion says, can you tell us some of your funny rookie stories when you was new to the department? Uh, I can't think anything right off my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Mark Perkins says, is an amateur MMA background going to be looked at favorably to an applicant? I don't think it'll ever come up, to be honest with you. Destiny says, good news, I'm joining the Police Explorer program. Hey, cool. In Texas, security can have a shotgun license as well as a sidearm. Maybe that's a better option. A uh, shotgun with slugs against long guns at least gives you an opportunity, a chance, but I wouldn't go with two, two sidearms. doesn't make a lot of sense for if you're worried about people with long guns. You were, if you're really worried about people with long guns, then maybe you need some body armor for long guns. But more realistically, you're protecting something you only have a sidearm. I hope they pay you really well. Uh, Dove says, all police departments in Orlando, Florida do not have an age limit to join. My question was referencing becoming an officer at the age of 40 and your opinion on it. As long as you can do the job, I don't care. I, don't, I know guys that are 56, 57 years old and still do the job. As long as you can still do the job, you can do the job. It's it's a pass-fail test, right? Like, if you come in at 21 and you can do the job, you're, you know, you're smart enough to do the job and you uh, you have the, the maturity to do the job, then great. I know people that are 50 that don't have the maturity to do the job. But at 40, if you can do it, if you can physically do it and you can mentally do it, then do it. Far be it for me to to dissuade someone whose age I am approaching and say, oh, you, you can't join then. It doesn't make sense. If you guys are 40 that do it, if you think you can do it, take take a shot at it. What's the downsides? S. Piescio says, do more videos on report writing? Mm, leave me a comment on the report writing video about what else you'd like to see. Can't think of a lot else to say in a video. Report writing on a video was really hard to do. It took me months to figure out how to do that. Uh, Lewis asks, do you agree with bounty hunters? We don't have bounty hunters here. I don't really have an opinion on them. Mr. Fusion says, what duty weapon would you pick if your department switched to 9mm? Right now, I'd have probably have to go with a Glock 34 because it's the direct relation to what I have now, the 35. So I would just switch calibers. Dove says, thank you. You're welcome. OC Outdoor says, I know officers that are 58 and have had multiple heart attacks and, perform and outperform younger officers. They're out there. Uh, VRP says in Serbia, I remember I remembered you were in Serbia, says here the age limit is 18 to 26 and we also have a high limit. Some places do have a limit at which, at how old you can be and still be a cop. Roland says, nope, $10 an hour, but I love security. I've done it since I left high school. I'm 28. I also want to be a Lido, but I need to go to the academy. Good luck with that, dude. I would not, 
If my major threat was guys with AKs were in black BDUs and I was working security for $10 an hour, I would leave. That's not... A, no. <laughs> I would leave. I would be perfectly honest with you. That is not a threat profile for which you should be making $10 an hour. I don't care what your certification is. Uh, Mark says, the reason I asked the question is because they asked if you ever hit a woman or been in a fight as an adult. I don't remember what that was about. Uh, Mr. Fusion says, when's that handcuff video coming out? Probably next week. Uh, I've got a handcuffing video that's up on the Patreon. So if you're a patron, you can go look at it now, but probably next week. Blaze says, I've been to Chicago. My aunt works at the FBI field office, and she gave me like a tour speech on how bad Chicago's gun laws aren't that bad, but that it's dangerous, as they say in some spots. About how Chicago's gun laws aren't that bad, but it, it is dangerous, as they say in some spots. Okay. Yeah, Chicago's dangerous. Lots of parts on the south side of Chicago are dangerous. Uh, the gun laws are silly at times, but they're not... Like, people are like, oh, it's impossible to get a... To, no, it's not impossible to get a gun, and it is not impossible to get one legally, and it is far from impossible to get a carry permit. Like, most people can get it. Uh, Kinley says, I'm working for a new college campus security department. They are only two years old. How can I help improve the deployment? Oh, I work at a community college. Oh. Louis Blackhawk says, do you wear body armor? If you do, what level? I always wear body armor. I wear a level 2 vest. It's one of my shoot at work. I have a level 3 plate in it. You can actually, I've got videos on putting the plate in the vest and fitting it in there. And then I have a plate carrier that has level 3 polyethylene plates front and back. And I've got a bunch of other body armor too that I don't ever wear, to be honest with you. Like I have a big turtle suit thing that I don't ever wear. The armor's only good if you wear it. Asher says, um, has crime been going up in Chicago in the past few years? If so, what do you think your department will have to deal with in 15 years? I don't know what's going to happen in 15 years. Um, the crime rate fluctuates so much in and around the Chicagoland area, it's hard to put, put real good numbers on it. I don't know that crime overall has been going up, but um, aggravated batteries have been going up. People getting shot has been going up in the last few years. And um, homicides have been trailing up a little bit, I think. I have to look it up to know for certain, but you have to keep into account that part of that is a lot of people are living who would have died 15 years ago. So there's a whole bunch of different things that skew those numbers. Do patrol carry ARs, AR and vehicle rewrite? Yes, and I do as well. I always carry an AR. Walker says, in your experience, how common or uncommon is it for officers to patrol in pairs? Uh, within the city of Chicago proper, it's very common for officers to patrol in pairs almost everywhere else around here. It's uncommon for officers to patrol in pairs. Last summer, uh, we doubled up all summer. It was cool. We were very busy, and we doubled up. But lots of places don't have the manpower available to do that. Uh, OC Outdoors, your thoughts on building versus buying an AR-15? Just buy it. Just buy it. I mean, for my work, for police work, just buy it. O overall, better choice. Just buy it. I know guys that build AR-15s. If, if you're into it, that's great, but I would just buy it. I wouldn't even bother building it. At the prices that are in now, you're not going to save a lot of money and like, have it put together professionally. You're, you're not a professional to put together. If you're shooting a gun in your backyard, then yeah, you build it yourself, but if you're going to use it for serious purposes, I would just buy it from a reputable company. Are you old enough to drive when you look different with the beard? I know. Other than my job, I got to ask, have you ever had a trainee flake on you during an important or life-threatening situation? Yeah, it happens. Uh, Mr. Fusion says, can you do a video on your funny rookie story since you can't think of one? I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, Gert says, boy, we're all picking on you about your missing beer today. I know. Uh, Mark says, the department asks the applicants if they have ever hit a woman or been in a fight as an adult. I have to answer yes because of my training in MMA. Curious to see if... That might be an issue. You have to frame things right, right? Like, guys get this idea that they're going to say something and they're going to get DQ'd immediately because they said it. You have to frame it right. They say, have you ever hit a woman or been in a fight as an adult? You say, I train in MMA. I have never hit a woman or been in a fight outside of a sanctioned MMA event. Not that hard. You have to frame you have to frame your answers right. Like if there's a good excuse, you have to frame your answer right. And be like, no, outside of that, I have never I've never done that. 
Um, and I think that's probably not going to be a problem with them. How could it be? It's perfectly legal what you're doing. Blaine says, 1750 an hour working as a bouncer, but I've been stabbed twice in the last three months. But I love the work and know four of four drug attempts I've stopped that makes me feel a little better about it. I'm not sure that's worth 1750 an hour getting stabbed all the time, but if it makes you happy, brother, you have that. All right, 35 minutes in. I go to work soon. I got my wife waiting on me at home. So I will see you guys next time. Uh, what is it? It's Wednesday. So tomorrow I have a video coming out. I think it's the baton holder one. I have it on scheduled release. So I will see you guys later. Be safe. See you tomorrow.